Hey guys, it's Tracy, also known as Porch Daydreamer, and I am here to go through another video tutorial around painting, and this time we're gonna talk about repainting cabinets. Um, also, because many of you asked me the question, the last time I painted my cabinets, I used a paint sprayer, and this time I'm gonna do it by hand just so we can talk through how that process goes. Um, the big difference is, because I'm gonna be repainting, I've, I've initially painted these with cabinet enamel from Valspar, I'm gonna re be repainting with the same paint. I'm not going to be priming only in those areas that are scraped or scratched or damaged. Um, and that does happen over time when you have cabinets. These are the doors from my bath vanity and I'm getting ready to paint them decorators white from Benjamin Moore. So we are gonna get started. First thing first, I wanted to let you know it's really important to pay attention to what door or drawer you take off and actually label it. So I have a little system here. Hopefully you can see it, it says RR. So this means this is the right vanity and the right door. So when I put everything back, it matches up and I don't have any issues with hinges not um, lining up and the doors bouncing out. Or sometimes the drawers, the way the screw holes are, are not gonna line up. So I'm gonna get everything prepared and walk you through exactly what I'm gonna do. First, let's talk about preparing your area. So obviously you can see, and I'm, I'm in my very messy garage. I apologize, but I think we all live like this. Uh, I'm no different, you gotta have a place to put your stuff. Um, but what I have done is I've created a nice, safe environment to paint my cabinets and let them dry um, up off the floor. So this is just a plastic eight foot table, um, actually made by Costco, they sell them at Lowe's and I've covered it in brown craft paper just to protect it because you know if I want to use it for a party I don't want it filled with paint. And then the paint supplies we're going to be using are the Valspar Cabinet Enamel, which I'm a huge fan. You can, I'll link it below. I, I talk all about it and I actually use this for furniture paint too. Why I like it so much is it dries to a hard finish and you don't need to top coat. So it saves you a lot of time and energy just with the fact you don't have to top coat with the polyurethane. The big thing about this paint is you cannot shake it. It actually, if you do shake it, the bubbles will uh, pop on the surface of the paint and leave little marks. So make sure you always start first and get one of these from your Lowe's store. The other thing that is really important about cabinet enamel, it needs to be uh, applied with cabinet and door foam rollers. That's how you're gonna get the smoothest finish. So please look for these. They're carried literally everywhere. I'll link them below too. And also a Wooster brush. This absolutely is my favorite. It's a nylon polyester brush. Not natural, you don't want a natural bristle brush. Um, this is the best applicator. And then the other thing I'm gonna use is my handy paint pail, pail, hard for me to say. The reason I like it is I can pour the paint directly in here and run the roller back and forth um, without using a big paint tray. It just saves me a little bit of space. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay out all of my cabinets, doors and drawers, and get started. So I have to say, one of the number one questions I get asked is, if I have chips in the current cabinets where the paint is, how do I handle that before I get painting? Because I wanna repair it. So I'm just gonna show you, this is really easy. I use a 220 grit, which is a very fine grit sandpaper. And actually, I just chipped the paint trying to get the little rubber stoppers off, so just remember to take those off before you get painting. And so I'm just gonna lightly sand to make sure those areas are nice and smooth. And if I see any other chips, and these, I'm always gonna start with the back side of the cabinets, um, because when I flip these over, if one side's gonna get damaged, you want it to be the back side and not the front. And luckily, my cabinets are in really good shape. Um, the Valspar cabinet enamel really is an extremely durable product. And I haven't had a lot of issues with um, getting chips. So I think I'm just gonna do a quick light sand. And you see it doesn't take off the paint, but what it does is it just scuffs up the surface so there's a little bit more adhesion when you go to paint over it. I am a little bit worried about the um, adhesive that's left behind from where these stoppers are, but I'm gonna go right over it with more stoppers. And again, this is the back side of the cabinet. Not gonna be too concerned about it. All right, easy. Next, people always ask, how do I prep? This is a Norwex cloth. I don't know if you've ever heard of them, but I don't typically use any chemicals. I just don't want anything to interfere with the adhesion with the paint. 
So I've gotten this damp in the sink and I will just go ahead and make sure I get all of that sanding dust off before I actually get started. Just lightly wipe everything down one by one. And you can see there's a little bit of stuff coming off on the cloth. So you wanna make sure you get these totally dust free. And then I'm gonna go back with just a microfiber towel. So the whole goal is you don't want any dust or dirt or particles to interfere with the paint. And I'm just gonna dry everything off and make sure it's really dry before I get started painting. So I pointed the camera angle down just a little bit so you can actually see what I'm doing on the cabinet. So sorry if my face goes out of frame from time to time, but I'm ready to get started painting. Uh, what I wanted to show you is one of the reasons I love the Handy Paint Pail, because I can't say paint pail, uh, is it lets you attach your brush with magnets to the inside, so it's a really handy place to keep it. Um, the color that we're going to be painting today, ironically enough, is a Benjamin Moore color called Decorator's White, and yes, you can go to Lowe's, and they have most major paint manufacturer colors in their for, uh, formula database. And so I got the cabinet enamel tinted to a Benjamin Moore color. So that's a good little trick. Um, and the main thing is what I wanted to tell you is when you start painting, you're gonna wanna start painting on the edges and on the inside of the frame. So anywhere there's detail work and then do the rolling later. So you always wanna maintain a wet edge. So I'm gonna get going like you are not even here watching me. And I'd keep my stir stick in there because I always want to make sure the uh, paint is nice and stirred every time, maybe every half hour, not every time, but every half hour, because um, you don't want the, the color to settle. So you can see I'm pretty heavily applying it. Cabinet enamel is very forgiving. It will flow and level and make sure the brush marks actually disappear but you can see I'm going in areas with the brush that I can't do with the roller. My ultimate goal is to roll on as much paint as I possibly can because that's going to give me the smoothest finish. You can see why I had to protect the table because I'm going to I'm going to get after this and just paint away. And I'm always taking just a little bit of paint off on the inside edge of this pail. If you have a paint tray, same difference. Just don't want the paint to drip. The other thing is when I do the other side of these cabinets, which I most likely won't film, I like to do the edges twice. So they're gonna get us, you know, I'm probably gonna have to do three coats of white paint on these. But I wanna make sure I get as many coats on the edges because really the edges of a cabinet take the most abuse when you're opening and closing them. So a little extra paint is always a good thing. A little extra layer of protection. Not seeing I dripped a little bit there, so I'm just gonna make sure that drip doesn't stay. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is put my brush back up. And actually, I think I am gonna take this stir stick out. I'm just gonna lay it in my sink. is now I'm gonna roll, so foam roller, and it's cool because it fits right in here with the pail. And again, I'm gonna make sure I get some of the paint off so it's not totally drippy, for lack of a better word. And then I'm just gonna do a W pattern to get it going and then start rolling. So it looks pretty ugly when I first start, but I promise you it's gonna be amazing when I get finished. And you just want to make sure you thoroughly coat everything. So I'm working on the inside frame first. And then I'm going to get a little bit more paint. And what you're going to find is, so this is the first time I'm loading the roller with paint. Is there's not a ton of paint, obviously, that has absorbed into the foam. So the first one's always kind of the hardest. And it's going to leave a little bit more paint behind than you want. And you just keep rolling over it. It's gonna leave a little more splattering too. Don't worry about it, just keep going over it. 
You can see it's a fairly painless process. If I was here by myself and not talking to you, definitely have some tunes going. Or listen to a podcast. I don't know if you guys like to listen to podcasts. I listen to a lot of them about blogging. I do that when I exercise too. Does that make me weird? And look, very quickly, easily, I've already rolled on my first coat on the back side of my cabinet. You see, I just keep going over and make sure I don't have any puddles of paint. And then what you do, this is called striking off. When you get, you feel like you've gotten everything coated, you go back and you strike off. So that's getting everything going in the same direction. So again, you don't get any marks and it's a nice smooth finish. So now I'm gonna to go to the next cabinet. Time out, yep. I'm in a different outfit on a different day because I ran into major trouble hand painting cabinets. And I'm here to tell you, I'm never going to do it again. On the back side of these cabinets, I applied three coats to get them white and they are nice and bright and white and smooth. And I've let them dry really thoroughly. But do you see this mess over here? When you apply with a brush, so I was applying with a brush, it over applied the paint and the paint ended up dripping down onto the face of the cabinets and I had to get out my sander and sand them down. So I am never gonna hand paint again. I went and invested in a Wagner paint sprayer. It was $139. I got a quote to get these all painted prior to ever starting this, it was $800. So for me, the 139 was worth it. And what I'll tell you, so if you're really intimidated by a paint sprayer, which you shouldn't be, it's like literally like spraying with a, a can of spray paint. Um, and we're gonna walk through how to do that. If you're gonna do the edges, so I'm talking, you know, all along these edges here, use a foam brush, no different than you would the foam roller. Then you won't over apply the paint. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started. It's a beautiful sunny day here in Charlotte, about 55 degrees, and it's the perfect temperature for the paint to dry really quickly, and I'm gonna apply a whole lot less paint and get this job done in minutes versus days hand painting. So let's talk about paint sprayers and why I don't think you should be intimidated by them. You just need a little bit more equipment and it's really protective equipment for your body. Need a hat, please protect your hair. It will get into your hair. You need a mask to protect your lungs and you need some kind of goggles or glasses that if you wear glasses like I do, to protect your eyes. Pretty straightforward, right? Then there's only two settings. And really, if you see behind me, it looks like a little portable vacuum cleaner that the paint goes in this, it screws on and off, see? Just fill it up with paint. You have two settings, one for width of spray and one for the power of the spray. So how heavy or hard it's gonna come out. I always keep it around medium. So the setting I currently have is seven, which is kind of the halfway point on the sprayer. And then all you do is you pull the trigger and you make sure this nozzle is clean and you can either spray horizontally or vertically and that's it. So there's nothing to be intimidated by or scared of. You just plug it into the wall and get it going. So I'm gonna show you that next. All right, so I am ready to get started. I've got my glasses on, I have my mask ready to go. Um, I have the paint actually put into the container. I always recommend you fill it as far up as you have paint because the more paint that's in there, the more range of motion you have with the actual sprayer. Um, once I get going, you're not going to be able to hear me. I'm going to have this mask over my face and this gets a little bit noisy, but a couple things I want to tell you. Never pull the trigger on the sprayer when the air is not running because the paint will just blow out. Uh, the other thing is, it's just like when you use a can of spray paint, you press as you go over and you stop. And you press as you go over and you stop because you don't want to over spray too much on one end or the other because you're wasting paint that way. The other thing is, the drawers I've already sprayed, I used this much paint out of a quart to get a beautiful, nice coat. So that's the other benefit is you're gonna use less paint even though you had to pay money for a sprayer. So I'm gonna get going.
hopefully you were watching what I was doing and I made sure that I was looking all the way around. I don't want to over apply the paint. This is coat number one. I'm going to let it dry another four hours until I recoat again. And I just want to get the best coat possible on the first try so it's nice and smooth so the second coat goes on and that takes a matter of minutes. So I hope I took away the fear factor related to paint spraying. I highly recommend this is how you paint your cabinets. You see it takes no time at all and it's only going to take two coats. We're going to be done. I'm going to get these installed tomorrow. I hope this was helpful and have a great day.